The onboard computers are now uh, in command of the launch. This orbiter is alive at this moment. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. Okay, see the water underneath? And there are the sparkles. Six main engines. Performing normally, Atlantis on course, on track, 
for its preliminary orbit. The camera is on the, the environmental tank. systems officer reports a good flash of apparator system activated for Atlantis, providing cooling for the shuttle's avionics until the payload bay doors are open about an hour and a half into the flight. You can see the horizontal tail on the bottom of the shuttle, the bottom of the orbiter. And you can see the Earth back behind it. That space down on the lower left and lower part of it. And shortly we'll see that whole configuration roll to a heads-up position as they acquire the TETRA satellite, the tracking data relay satellite. And uh, one of the neat things about that maneuver... is that we never know which way it's going to go as to who's going to get the great view, the pilot or the commander. Orbital altitude targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three engines continue to perform normally, as do the auxiliary power units and the three power-producing fuel cells. Five and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis now 67 miles in altitude, 312 miles downrange, traveling almost 8,000 miles an hour. The A-frame you see to the right portion... The A-frame you see to the right portion of the screen, that is the forward attach point for the uh, space shuttle to the external fuel tank. In the back, there's roll maneuver. It looks like the pilot's going to get a good view again. Roll to a heads-up position, the main engine swiveling, enabling, enabling the shuttle to uh, move to a heads-up position above its fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Atlantis, press the Miko. Single engine Zaragoza 104. That call from Capcom Chris Ferguson uh, to Commander Charlie Hobaugh indicating that Atlantis can make normal orbital cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. Okay, nominal shutdown. Go for plus X. Go for the pitch. So let's go from nominal maneuvering after we uh, separate from the external fuel tank. Atlantis, 66 miles in altitude, almost 500 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling almost 11,000 miles an hour. 90 seconds left in powered flight. cutoff and separation, the orbiter will maneuver in such a way as to allow one of the mission specialists to... Seven minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Take photographs of that external Atlantis, fuel tank. Providing a smooth ride uphill for Commander Charlie Hobaugh and his crew. 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 15,000 miles an hour. That is fast. We're waiting for the word for main engine cutoff. Eight minutes, ten seconds into the flight. It's about 20 more seconds to go to Miko. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff cut confirmed by the booster officer, standing by for external tank separation. ET set. Okay, now you can applaud. Yeah, we're in orbit. Again, congratulations to all of you who are here to witness that beautiful launch. And thanks for your countdown, too. You bet. Everything helps. Excellent. 
Thank you for being with us and enjoy your day here at the John F. Kennedy Space Center. Thanks very much.